the reunion is happening because I think of several reasons. One is, I hate to admit it, nostalgia. Two is good friends. Three uh, um, is my greatest fear is that they're doing it for me. <laughs> Because I'm sort of a bitch and a diva, and I kind of insist on things, even when I'm trying to ask politely, I'm really just insisting. Willie and Peter and I have been started playing in like '89 together, and played till like '95. And in 2007, Willie called us and wanted to re-record some old tunes that he was looking at um, TV and film interests and stuff, and the fidelity that we had recorded them with um, originally wasn't good enough for that so let's just get together and then because of the band reuniting I guess he took the opportunity to write some new tunes and when we were in the studio he was just wow this is amazing you know this is gonna have to be a record so go ruin your good thing go on you won't get a fight but I swear if I want your friend I'd kiss her and me gig will be really important because we can then bring the polish that we uh, won't have here and we can bring that to our Minneapolis gigs that are, and those will be uh, the real return to form, return to hometown kind of, kind of shows. Some of our oldest fans will be there. Yes, I'm down. I'm down So incredibly low I couldn't go no further Lest I'd be near on the ground Yes, I'm high Yes, I'm high First, a bass player with um, Willie Wisely, coffee house singer, and then we had a duo. The only drummer we could find was a really hot reggae guy, so we ended up forming Willie Wisely and the Stone Soul Picnic, which had um, a drummer and a trumpet player and two female background singers, and me and Willie. That band, of course saw its demise and we actually had a gig opening up for Dr. John at First Avenue and realized that we really couldn't fill the main room with just the two of us so it's like Peter's always gung-ho for that kind of thing and we didn't have a drummer so we're like hey you know can you just sit in I have seen the sky very lucky. First of all, it's lucky we're all alive. <laughs> Second of all, um, it's lucky that we all kind of came out of it to friends because it wasn't always pleasant and some of it ended acrimoniously. But we've got all past that and we realize now that we have 800 gigs in that rusted Dodge van together that actually did something. It brought really disparate people together and, and made something that just won't really be manufactured in any other way. I guess it's probably something akin to you know, an Olympic sports team or something. It happens and it disappears. Uh -huh.
sit in and he sat in and uh, it's kind of like the Keith Moon story where he, you know he sat in with the who and he totally destroyed the drums and they're like you're in yeah that night he was like totally just gone and just partying and it's just like playing along he's like get in the van It was something that I learned by going through all the board tapes from the early 90s to, to put together our live album, which is that we were at our best uh, when chaos set in. Chaos is that order is what has a termination point, but chaos is eternal. played together in 18 years, uh, the four of us. Actually, the four of us still might not play together for 18 years, depending on if Greg wind wakes up from his mid uh, midsummer nap. Well, now he thinks you're mad, now you gotta like kiss oh, no. him or something. No, no. Jesus, you guys. I've been playing a little bit, but I haven't had time, just with the job and everything, to like really focus. So I'm gonna make some noise a little bit, but I'm not gonna play all the parts because uh -huh. I don't have them all. Uh -huh. and sure. So we're just gonna see how this goes. Uh, Greg has lost his lip. You know, he hasn't played in the better part of 20 years. He revved it up a bit for the recording sessions that happened over the last few years. But uh, this is, you know, playing live is an entirely different thing. Uh, he told me not to call you. And so I did not call you. <laughs> so we need to get this clear now. Oh because no, don't, no, no, don't, He's because it's to totally cool, it's okay, totally cool, it. no, I'm not kidding you, don't like, all of a sudden, like, Puppet start, Master like, James. coming out and deciding that this is, oh, remember when I said we are exactly who we always were, and we're going to be who we are, well, guess what, the time we've spent together, we know that we're exactly like we are, and you are exactly like you are, so don't come up with some theory you know, to explain to him who you are, because we know who you are. <laughs> Correct? What the Jesus. fuck did that mean? Right. <laughs> oh. wow. No, I called woefully uh, uh, 
I apologize. We're playing a very long set, like 24 songs. Uh, so we haven't uh, gone deep, deeply rehearsed any single one of them. Yeah, we we rehearsed like most of Toronto, right? Yeah, except we got one o'clock photo shoot. I believe it took us nine months just to, to book and confirm an, uh, a photo shoot. And then we got three o'clock load in so that we get a good solid sound check, run through tunes. I'm recovering from vocal surgery. After 11? Yeah. Jesus. I say we're done at 11. Me too. Yeah. Oh, so then I'm up all night playing to the CD or something. I, I don't mind keeping playing, but I don't want to like exert a lot of energy, but run and changes. I've forgotten many of the songs I wrote. The, the chord structures are so strange and they're inspired by things that, that used to occur to me and that don't occur to me anymore. So it's basically like playing somebody else's music, which is actually really fun. You know, ask any musician, it's almost always funner to be in a cover band than it is to, <laughs> to play, play your own shit because your ego's all involved in it. And when you're playing cover music, you're just trying to make people happy. Giggles! He's really far away. Smoking. It was the, it was the planned moments or the smooth moments that didn't seem to work. <laughs> Gotta find the no Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> James has been uh, Mr. Therapy session. He listened to some family phone calls from me. Talk him through, talk him off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids a lot. They're not seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these old songs that are sort of looser in structure and are just a kind of a bag of tricks would would not were not ideal. But I think it's absolutely an ideal meeting ground for us after 18 years to play these kind of right rather than ones that have 40 different chord changes and different chords in each four bars. And, and I still want that T-shirt that says I'm here, not I'm queer, just here. I think that's the thing about the, the trio was that uh, there were always these kind of musical shenanigans and not just not just jokey, it freely uh, incorporated straight blues and, and pop songwriting with uh, the slightly avant-garde uh, cave jams. Kids messing with you? Yeah, Lydia's off. She was told her friend's parents that they were staying at our house, and she told me that they were staying, staying at, at their room. house. That's how it works. So, yeah, so now. You gotta go home? No. <laughs> what the fuck is on my fucking foot? Gum. That's We're now covered. into my Persian rug. We played it up at the Uptown that in the bathroom there was a. Uh, <coughs> someone wrote on the wall, uh, Trio sucks. Willie's gay, Greg's drunk. <laughs> I mean, you jump in the back of an orange van and head around the country for four to five years. You know, you become pretty close with, you know, and you're making music. And the kind of music we make is very um, conversational. Like, we play music that's not the same every time. The truth is, is we couldn't play it the same way twice if we wanted to. I can't 
Well, I think we have an instant rapport, and plus the added uh, wisdom of the ages. It's all about focusing on the best parts of what we, we do. A closet of plants, so I turn on my grow lamps. Don't tell my parents. Just amazing to get back with the guys again. It's just like, Stepping into an old car, except um, like now we know how to drive better. That was a great thing about Willie is that as much of a control freak as he thinks he is, he would write tunes on the guitar and put them on tape and we would listen to them and when we'd get together, he would give us very little direction on what he wants our parts to be. After we come up with something, he'd tweak it here and there, but I mean really, Peter and I's parts are our parts, you know, so you're really just being yourself and you think every band is going to be like that. And then you start working with other people and you realize that it's not. and I can't, won't stand for any dissipation. I, I only want growth. It can be different, it can be whatever, but I just don't want to feel like a shell of our former selves. And I think that's what drives all of us a little bit. <laughs> Everyone's afraid of age. And in that manner, I guess music connects nicely with the sense of immortality, and music is immortal. And we want to cling on to music because it lives past us. And that's how many of us leave our mark on this earth. Uh, certainly how I want to leave my mark on the earth. Stopping at 1993, they had done so much for me on a musical, emotional, brotherhood level. There's really no paying it. There's no understanding why they made, they gave the things to me that they did. It's just cruel and unusual and wonderful. And I'm, I'm thankful for that eternally. So, so I can assume that they're doing it for me because it sure seems like they are. <laughs> Did I tell you guys you could sit on that couch?
the lights are taken care of on this one. Uh -huh.
Keep it around.